President Trump has reacted to Epstein's death in what is sadly a very unsurprising way. He is spreading a conspiracy theory that the Clintons had Epstein killed. Let that sink in. This would be like Gerald Ford or Jimmy Carter or Ronald Reagan claiming that LBJ had Kennedy killed. Nonetheless, because this is Donald Trump, this is what we've come to expect. Because this isn't the first, no, it's not the second or even the third time the president has made baseless claims without regard for the consequences of his rhetoric. He's also suggested Senator Ted Cruz's dad was involved in JFK's assassination, that Justice Antonin Scalia was murdered because a pillow was found over his face, that Joe Scarborough may have been involved in his intern's death, that there was something fishy about the suicide of Vince Foster, a former Clinton aide. Don't forget, he started the birther movement. He went so far as to offer President Obama $5 million for his college records and passport. Trump raised questions about Senator Marco Rubio's eligibility to be president because his parents were not born in the U.S. Trump conveniently ignored the fact that his own mother wasn't born in the U.S. Trump also raised similar eligibility questions about Senator Ted Cruz because he was born in Canada. President Trump went on to claim that President Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. His own Justice Department publicly said this did not happen. Trump claimed he saw and read about Muslim Americans celebrating on 9-11. Absolutely no footage or news articles have ever been found to support this. He said he lost the popular vote because millions of people voted illegally. A commission he put together to find this widespread fraud never found any. He's argued that global warming is a hoax created by the Chinese. The president leaves out that he sought to build a seawall at his Scottish golf course to, quote, protect from global warming and its effects. He claims vaccines cause autism and that noise from windmills can cause cancer. He's denied that 3,000 people died in Puerto Rico due to Hurricane Maria. And the president has adamantly denied that Russia interfered in the 2016 election. Who can forget this? I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. She's saying Russia, 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 but I don't, maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? You don't know who broke in to DNC. We do know it was Russia. U.S. intelligence officials have been very public about that and provided ample evidence. As for his latest conspiracy theory, though, dangerously claiming that Epstein was murdered by the Clintons, the White House is defending it. I think the president just wants everything to be investigated, as you, as your reporter just revealed just the day before. There was some unsealed information implicating some people very high up. And I'm not going to repeat their names. Jeffrey Epstein has done some very bad things over a number of years. And so let's continue to investigate that. Let me bring in our two guests here, New York Times politics editor Patrick Healy, an editor and columnist for Real Clear Politics, A.B. Stoddard. Patrick, I compared earlier uh, this to Presidents Ford, Carter, Reagan, claiming LBJ had Kennedy killed. I mean, what would the reaction have been had that happened? Yeah, it would have been a sort of shock and, and frankly, a, a, a sort of an appalling reaction. But that's because those uh, presidents, uh, who, you know, followed, I think, a code of conduct that we've come to expect from from presidents. Uh, oftentimes, they don't rush to conclusions. They don't jump to conclusions. You know, as as head of the government, they're usually trying to set a tone for, in the case of criminal activity uh, or a, sort of a shocking suicide with questions remaining, um, one for kind of a thorough investigation. But the reality is, is that we have a president now whose Twitter feed is a chief source of disinformation in the world. I mean, this is a president who loves to trade in conspiracies and untruths like the long, powerful list that you put on the screen. And he is particularly uh, preoccupied uh, some might say obsessed with the Clintons. Now, I don't know if that goes to an insecurity because if not for the Electoral College, Hillary Clinton would be president right now instead of Donald Trump. But it seems like he, he really is very preoccupied with, with her, with Bill Clinton, sort of pushing this, uh, you know, these sort of, you know, scurrilous, unfounded rumors. And, you know, in as much as he himself was someone who had a long history with Jeffrey Epstein, you know, you have to wonder if he's just interested in, you know, uh, 
showing some smoke on other people hmm. or, or what have you. I do wonder, A.B., what the president gets out of spreading baseless claims like this over and over and over again. Well, in this particular case, he gets a couple of things. I mean, I saw Kellyanne Conway was making lemonade out of lemons, uh, insinuating that people, a lot of people have a lot of secrets and they're very high up. And we know that Bill Clinton was on Epstein's plane several times. And as Patrick notes, we know that there's video of Donald Trump dancing at Epstein's parties. So he, um, I think, enjoys, he enjoys conspiracy theories, which is why everyone's sort of rolling their eyes and not having this kind of, you know, unbelievable response that would follow any other president doing anything like this. Uh, Anna, Patrick, my, all three of us, if we um, tweeted stuff like this uh, in this reckless fashion, we, we would likely lose our jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that he likes to have this out in conservative media and amplified online. He has told his supporters that there are very bad people in the government who do very bad things. He's used the word treason many times. He's used the word coup. No Republican uh, elected officials have pushed back on that. And he is telling uh, his supporters, uh, I believe, in, in advance of, of next year's election that, you know, the government is out to get him. He's been saying this really pr pretty much since day one. Uh, and I think the fact that he doesn't want to tweet it himself, but he retweets it, he knows that that gets it into the bloodstream and gets people um, all upset about the fact that, uh, you know, that Bill Clinton was a very bad person and was connected to Epstein and that the Clintons still have the power to do something like this. But um, is it clear whether Trump actually believes these claims? I don't think he cares. Like Patrick said, he really weaponizes disinformation. It doesn't mean when he retweets something that he necessarily believes it, but he likes people to be questioning um, facts and he likes uh, people. He, he loves any time that he can get anyone um, of his of his supporters upset at the Clintons or the media or the Democrats or Obama. You know, he has a bag of handy foils and they are among his top favorites. Yeah, I, I would add to that, I, you know, there's a popular phrase, retweets don't equal endorsements. I think with him they do equal endorsements, and this is, it may not be something that he himself deep down believes, but he likes the fact that this stuff is in the bloodstream, and he, he likes the kind of chaos that it causes. But do you think it's dangerous? I think, sure, of course. I mean, the degree to which uh, some people will read this, um, and you saw this with the Pizzagate conspiracy, uh, you saw this with the information that came out uh, around Christine Blasey Ford, um, you know, real people can become uh, targets. You know, d there are plenty of deranged people out there who may say, well, the President of the United States is pushing this. And, well, look you know, at Cesar Sayoc, who was just sentenced this week to 20 years in prison. Sure, sure. I mean, the, Clint the reality is the Clintons have, you know, the best protection uh, in the world with the Secret Service. But the, the reality is, is, is when you have the President of the United States, it's not just anyone who's pushing a rumor out there. You don't, you really don't know what the unintended consequences of this is. Donald Trump may be sitting back in New Jersey and having a good laugh at how people, you know, get so upset over retweets of silly things that he puts out. And then you will have an unintended consequence. Then you will have something dangerous that comes out. And that's why I feel like it's, it's not, uh, we can't let ourselves become too, um, you know, numb and immune to these things because you don't know what effect they're going to have. So he's there tweeting conspiracy theories. He's on the attack this weekend. Again, yesterday alone attacking the media, U.S.-South Korea joint military exercises, Bill Maher, uh, Joe Biden, and former White House Press Secretary Anthony Scaramucci. All this via Twitter. Scaramucci tweeting back, he wrote this, for the last three years I have fully supported this president. Recently he has said things that divide the country in a way that is unacceptable, so I didn't pass the 100% litmus test. Eventually he turns on everyone and soon it will be you and then the entire country. A.B., what do you make of that? Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Um, because Anthony Scaramucci said recently when he was criticizing the president that the president might that might make him mad. Uh, he was talking about how the trip to El Paso was a debacle. Um, and, you know, I think that it was also eerily similar to the comments that Michael Cohen made in his testimony to the House about how, you know, he's going to turn on on all of you and, and you shouldn't be loyal to him. Mm -hmm. But I think that we've seen Republicans who will not come out tonight upset about him retweeting a conspiracy theory about the Clintons, 
killing off Jeffrey Epstein in jail. Um, I, you will see the Republicans remain as silent as they have all along um, because they don't want to counter him and they believe that they can retain his good favor and hold on to their seats if they don't criticize him the way that Scaramucci has. Amy Stoddard, Patrick Healy, thank you both. Thanks, Anna.